To be or not to be. Not to be. Get to the chopper! Stick around. You're fired. This is war. Let's get some ice. Come on. Don't bullshit me. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. 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 Here's my invitation. My neighbors are very sensitive. Who is your daddy? And what does he do? Come with me if you want to live. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! There is no bathroom! You broke my cover! Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. There's a fucking asshole. Assholes. Dickhead. Come back. Slats. Bastards! One ugly motherfucker. See you at the party, Richter! Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Oh! I'm a cop, you idiot. Cocaine. I'll be back. 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 I'm back. Put that cookie down now. You want to fuck with me? Get down, 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 get possibly the most testosterone fueled thing that I have ever put on this channel. I put out a little video, a picture actually on social media, on Facebook, and I believe on Twitter as well, a couple of weeks ago. I had saw this artwork of Arnold Schwarzenegger and his character of John Kimball and Kindergarten Cop and all of his other characters that he's famous for are crawling around him like the kindergarten kids. And I put it out there saying when a picture makes you want to do a top 10 video and everybody was like, do it now. Arnold, yes! And I'm not doing this alone. Chris Durbin and Brian Lomax, my very awesome friends, uh, wanted to come out and play as well. So when this video goes live, once you're done watching this, check the video description below. Both of their videos are live now as well. See where our lists differ, which ones are similar. I feel like the top two or three are gonna have a lot of similarities. From there on out, it's probably gonna be chaos. But Arnold Schwarzenegger, even to this day, is by far one of my favorite actors of all time. When I was growing up, Arnold Schwarzenegger was like the god of Hollywood. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Adam Sandler were like the two actors of a 90s kid that were like event films. Every single time this guy came out with something new, that was the thing to see that year as far as I was concerned. A lot of his movies mean a lot to me. A lot of his movies are some of my favorite films of all time. They're some of the most nostalgic films of all time. They have the most rewatchability. I absolutely love this dude. I love his work. And um, yeah, I was very excited. And it was a tough top 10 to come up with. I'll tell you that because I could probably do a top 15 and still struggle with where to place things. But we got to make things permanent, right? We got to decide which things are going where. So starting off at number 10 for me personally is Jingle All The Way. And this is by far one of my favorite holiday films. I have a lot of great memories of seeing this in theaters with my dad and constantly watching it every single December with him. Uh, we have a lot of like one-liners that we'll trade back and forth sometimes during the holidays from this movie. It's a blast. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger I've always thought was very underrated for his comedic talent because some of his comedy films I think are some of my favorite comedies of all time and are very underappreciated. And Jingle All The Way is one of those movies to where just this whole situation of going out to find that one toy that your kid wants, uh, especially nowadays where Black Friday just seems to get more ridiculous and more ridiculous as time has gone on, with the exception of 2020, that is something we can all relate to. And especially as a parent, that's something you can definitely relate to. And just the comedic rivalry between him and Sinbad, who is also one of my favorite comedians from the 90s, it's comedy gold. Uh, it's got some great stuff in it as far as one-liners, those Arnie lines that we all know and love and hold with us. Uh, some of the action sequences whenever he has to become Turbo Man at the end is just hysterical. It's one of my favorite Arnie films, one of my favorite holiday films, and it's number 10. 
Number nine is Last Action Hero. Definitely the most underappreciated Arnold Schwarzenegger film. Like for Arnie fans, this is the one that we all still scratch our head at, at how this was not a huge success back in the day. I mean, it's famous for being a bomb. It's famous for everybody tearing it to shreds, not understanding what the hell they were going for here. That very like meta, smart, you know, kind of satire of action films is something that if it was released today, it would be like glorified. Like, this is awesome. This is such a smart thing to do. For whatever reason, I guess people just weren't ready for it back in the day, but it's always been one of my favorites. The soundtrack is kick-ass. Let me just get that out right now. You got ACDC, you got Megadeth, you got Alice in Chains. Yes, yes, and yes. The action sequences are great. I mean, they're over the top, they're ridiculous, they're stupid, but the movie basically tells you to expect that. It says, hey, we're here to have fun. We're here to poke fun at how over the top Arnold Schwarzenegger movies are and action films are with the one-liners, with all of the cliche characters, like the angry black captain that's just screaming and you know he's sizzling like a teapot every single time that he talks. You got the over the top villains, you got Charles Dance with the little eyeball and everything. So many things in this movie are iconic to me, but it's just the smartness of the script to me that just continues to age so well about this movie where you have this kid who is basically like me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a character that a lot of us action fans, especially fans that grew up as kids watching movies like Die Hard and Terminator, that's a character that we look at and we're just, we put ourselves into the movie and now he is a vessel for us to go on this little journey with. And just going through all these little action cliches and trying to teach an action movie character about these cliches and why you never get hit with bullets and why you never run out of bullets and why everybody knows who you are even though you're just a cop. Like, it's just such a enjoyably smart movie that's a blast every single time that I rewatch it and uh, if you were one of those people that did not see it back in the day because of all the reviews or have heard that it was a bomb and never really given it a shot give it a shot because Last Action Hero is deserving of much more credit than it gets. Number eight is Kindergarten Cop which I actually rewatched last night while I was doing my thumbnails and everything. Uh, this is a movie that I always grew up loving. This was one of the first like Arnold Schwarzenegger comedies where he tried to kind of go in, do something that's, you know, somewhat family friendly. There's obviously some PG-13 stuff in here as far as the, the bad guy and some of the violence in there and some of the drug use with it. So it has that nice balance where it's not too kitty for adults, but it's not too adult for the kids. But comedy wise, this movie is one of the most quotable Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. I mean, shut up. We've all used that meme at least once or twice, or even the gif of it. I mean, you even have that, you got, it's not a tumor. Take your toy back to the carpet. There is no bathroom. Big, burly, tough, bearded, Arnold Schwarzenegger super cop going against a bunch of kindergartners, and that might be the biggest fight that we've ever seen him have on screen. It's just a very smart script, guy going undercover, trying to figure out which of these kids is the son of this murdering drug dealer guy that he's been trying to put away for a long time and at the same time kind of falling in love with these kids, falling in love with being a teacher, falling in love with the small town and kind of bringing him down from his darkness a bit. It's a very good movie that's timeless. It shows a lot of range in Arnold Schwarzenegger from his emotion to his comedy to the action stuff. It's a bona fide classic for me and it is sitting here at number eight. Remember when I told you Commando was gonna be number one? I lied. Number seven, Commando. This is the quintessential, ridiculous, over-the-top, rated R-fueled Arnold Schwarzenegger 80s action movie. And I have always, always loved it for being that. Uh, this is a movie that I remember wearing the VHS tape out, uh, put it on, and then just within minutes, the movie kicks off and just does not stop to the end. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger as this father trying to get his daughter back from these group of terrorists that have a vendetta against him and it's just like i said it's the most cliche over the top 80s everything and it's awesome for all of it the action scenes are great the one-liners are awesome the gore is there like as soon as you get onto the island in the third act and he becomes the commando and you get that iconic scene of him putting the you know, camo all over himself, and, and he goes out and just lays waste to an entire island of terrorists. That is the type of movie that you wanted from Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 80s. Uh, it, it's not for everybody. If you watch it for the first time now, a lot of it's probably going to be corny. A lot of it's probably going to be cheesy. It is absolutely a movie that has helped greatly with nostalgia, but I have truckloads of nostalgia for this movie. Like I said, just the quintessential 80s over-the-top, ridiculous Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. 
and it will always be one of my favorites. Number six, Get Your Ass to Mars with Total Recall. This is a movie that has actually improved a lot over time for me. Uh, it's a sci-fi concept that I think I just didn't quite get as a kid. I was more visual looking at the action, looking at the gore, which was great but it was never one of my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. As I've gotten older, the more that I rewatch it, the more that I love this thing. It's based off of a novel called Remember It For You Wholesale. It tells this whole concept about a man that wakes up every single day dreaming about Mars, uh, having some kind of a hankering, some kind of a tie to Mars that he can't explain. And there's this futuristic little technology, this business that will implant memories into your head to give you a vacation. So rather than you paying money to go off to wherever the hell you want to go, you just sit in a chair, they stick the memories in and you wake up going, hey, I just got back from a four month bender in Mars. That's pretty awesome. And when they try to implant this memory, they realize he has a memory block, he wakes up, people are trying to kill him, and he is not who he thinks that he is and who he says that he is. And then you go on this action, gore-fueled, sci-fi extravaganza adventure, trying to figure out who this guy is, why he has been to Mars, what his ties are to Mars, and why all these people are trying to kill him. It's just an awesome movie. It gets better with age. I think it ages very well as far as the special effects and all the makeup effects of it. The story is just very genius. And I even like the remake, I'll say that too. It's weird to have a Paul Verhoeven movie watered down to PG-13. It's the same problem I had with Robocop, but both of those remakes I do think are a little better than people give them credit for. So there you go, if you wanna check that out too. But as far as the Arnold Schwarzenegger one, I just have a lot of great memories of watching this and, and laughing at him kicking the shit out of Sarah Stone because I remember her as the basic instinct chick and now all of a sudden she's fighting Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, I was a kid in the 90s that had seen basic instinct. <sighs> anyway, total recall, total kick-ass movie, sci-fi, a little bit of gory horror stuff in there with some of the monster effects, a lot of action, a lot of great one-liners. See you at the party, Rita! Check it out. Number five is bar none, one of my favorite comedies of all time, and that is Twins. You have this whole concept about this infant that was genetically engineered, all of the different traits taken from, you know, a superstar athlete to a genius scholar to a scientist, trying to put all that stuff in to make one superhuman, and the embryo splits, and you have all the awesomeness go into Arnold Schwarzenegger as this big, tall, muscular genius kind-hearted, intellectual person, and the rest of it goes into Danny DeVito, who is a short, little bit scummy criminal. <laughs> and Arnold Schwarzenegger finds out he has a brother, goes to America for the first time to find him, and they heal each other's lives in very different ways, very many ways. And it's just an absolute comedy classic. Just the chemistry between those two actors of Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger is off the chart. Like I said, I think Arnold is just a very underrated comedic actor. I think that his delivery and his timing with a lot of his comedy is great and always has been. Uh, there's a little bit of action in here, a little bit of that action undercurrent if you want some of that, but it is very much a comedy. They've been talking about doing triplets, uh, some long awaited sequel for a long time. We'll see if that ever happens, bringing Eddie Murphy in as the long lost third brother, but there's a Shout Select Blu-ray coming out very soon. If you have never seen Twins, treat yourself and check out Twins. Speaking of Blu-ray releases, where the fuck is my 4K or my regular Blu-ray for that matter of True Lies? What the hell, James Cameron? Take a break from Pandora for a couple of days and give us a damn Blu-ray for True Lies. True Lies is awesome. This is one of those action classics that you look at and it makes you, despite if you're the biggest Avatar fan in the world, it makes you angry that James Cameron is not doing more things like this with the rest of his career and it's just gonna be Avatar for the rest of forever. True Lies is a great action movie. It's a great family drama. It's just a very funny concept where you have Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is husband by day and super spy by night. You have Jamie Lee Curtis as his ignorant wife that does not under, does not know what he does. She just is happy-go-lucky, thinks that he's a businessman, everything's cool. Meanwhile, he's taking out terrorists every single day. And eventually, those lies collapse. And uh, she starts to get brought into the fact that he has been the super spy this whole time. There's this whole terrorist organization going on in the background. It's just an awesome movie. Awesome action set pieces. Awesome one-liners from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Really good chemistry between him and Jamie Lee Curtis and a lot of comedy that comes out of that. That strip scene, woo! There's four stars just for that, right? Laurie Strode, thank you. True Lies is awesome, and 
I, like all of you, will just continue to watch whatever digital version is on Amazon Video until eventually we get that Blu-ray for one of the greatest action films and one of the greatest Arnold Schwarzenegger films of all time. Now we're at the top three, and I will be honest, this top three is stacked. I mean, my number one, I'm pretty sure, would always be number one, but two and three especially was like, oh God, which one is which? But as of right now, number three, I have landed on the original Terminator. This is the movie that launched Arnold Schwarzenegger into the superstardom that uh, he has gone on to have in this movie career. The reason why I'm even talking about this and the reason why you are watching it. The Terminator is an awesome movie. Sci-fi, action, horror. You got a big slasher element in there that a lot of people don't talk about, but it's there. Watch my review. I talk about it. The Terminator is just a great low-budget movie that kicked off I would say an awesome franchise, but we've had some ups and downs with the Terminator franchise, but it's certainly the franchise that Arnold is most well known for. It's the role that he's most well known for. It's one of the only movies where you see him as a villain, uh, not including Mr. Freeze. And it's just great. He's intimidating, he's scary, he's this unstoppable killing machine that has no other existence in life other than to fuck you up. You got Michael Bean in a great role as this protector, and you have Linda Hamilton as Sinakana in a role that became iconic for her. It's just a great story. It's a great story, a great concept. It's a good blend of all those different genres together. Uh, an awesome score, one of my favorite movie scores of all time. It, it's a classic. What more can I say about The Terminator? It's the shit. If you've never seen it, why are you watching me? Watch The Terminator. And now we're at the top two, and be sure to stick around and find out what number one is. But number two is Predator. Predator is by far the manliest, most testosterone-fueled movie ever created, and probably will always be the manliest, most testosterone-fueled movie ever created. It's awesome. This is a movie that I think is a perfect action film. It perfectly blends action with sci-fi. You have one of the greatest villains and one of the greatest creature designs ever in The Predator. It's a cool little mystery throughout the movie, trying to figure out what the hell this little you know, invisible thing is, what is its deal, what is its goal, what is this thing, and you slowly just get revealed throughout the movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger and all of his little gang of huge muscle-bound meatheads going through and just tearing apart terrorists in the jungle and then getting tore apart themselves one by one by the Predator is awesome. Uh, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers give you the most manly handshake in the world. And this movie is cool and unique in the sense that this is the one huge blockbuster Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that everybody knows, but it doesn't feel like an Arnold Schwarzenegger vehicle. Every other movie on this list, you remember it, you remember it as an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I remember Predator as a Predator movie, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is just one of the people in it. He is there to serve the story, to serve the, the villain of the Predator, the reveal of all of that, and he does awesome in the movie as being that, you know, huge man versus beast kind of conflict that you have in here, but it doesn't feel like a movie that is fueled by Arnold Schwarzenegger's star power, which is very cool and unique for this one. And I just love the way that the movie progresses, the way that it's paced out, eventually leading to the third act where Arnold Schwarzenegger has to go primal and, you know, cover himself in mud and, you know, beat it with sticks and traps. And then you have the predator that reveals its face and takes the mask off and gets rid of all its technology. And it's just like, all right, let's duke it out, Dutch. It's kick-ass. This is one of the most awesome movies of all time, and it is number two. But number one, a lot of you probably already knew what it was gonna be, is Terminator 2, Judgment Day. This is one of my favorite films of all time, bar none. One of the best sequels, one of the best action movies, one of the best Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, obviously. It's everything to me. This is a movie that when I talk about wearing out the VHS tape, I'm surprised this fucker did not melt by the time I was six years old because it was just in constant rotation in my VCR. It's a perfect film from start to finish. I have no negatives with this whatsoever. Every single scene I feel like is just awesomely directed, it is awesomely crafted. When you have just action set piece after action set piece after action set piece all the way through to the end, the movie never, never, stops to exhale and just punches you in the dick from start to finish. You get awesome performances and awesome characters all the way around. That little flip-flop of taking Arnold and making the protector and then bringing in Robert Patrick to play the T-1000, still the greatest villain in the Terminator franchise. Just a genius idea. Sarah Connor, you have Linda Hamilton coming back in this. She's bigger, she's stronger, she's more muscular, she's a little bit more unhinged, and I still consider her the greatest final girl of all time between these two movies. You get John Connor played by Edward Furlong and by far the best iteration we've ever gotten by a landslide of John Connor in this franchise. This is a movie that is just everything. It is very important to me as a movie fan. It shaped who I was as a movie fan and it's absolutely my number one favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. 
So that's it guys, that is my top 10 Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. Be sure to check out Brian Lomax and Durbania's videos. They're gonna be down in the video description below. See how theirs differs and is similar to mine. Go ahead and make your own list down below in the comment section and we will talk about it. And then turn off YouTube, grab yourself a big ass bucket of popcorn and a big ass barrel of beer and just give yourself an Arnold Schwarzenegger marathon for the rest of this weekend and join in on the fun. So thank you guys for watching as always. Like and share this video, hit that subscribe button and check out all the other awesome content I have in this channel. Channel, all of the Terminator reviews, you can start there. And as always guys, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.